Uh, my name is Simon Abrisk. I'm a uh, department chair in Civil and Environmental Engineering School of Mining and Petroleum. The Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering School of Mining and Petroleum is uh, one of the best top departments in the country in uh, civil engineering. Actually, it's one of the best uh, around North America. Um, we have incredible number of good quality faculty members that are fairly well accomplished in uh, research, in consulting, and in public service. And they have uh, uh, provided a lot of us with uh, incredible amount of knowledge and know-how in the field of uh, uh, civil and environmental engineering as well as the fields of mining and petroleum. Uh, the program is divided into three separate undergraduate programs. Uh, civil and environmental engineering, you could go into straight civil engineering and you could take a specialization in environmental for those that are interested in that uh, specific field. Uh, mining is one separate program and petroleum is a separate program. Obviously, they're self-explanatory in terms of uh, what each one of them offers. But civil engineering, as I mentioned uh, before, you know, is, is affects the quality of life of every one of us. We build the infrastructure um, that we use. We, um, we protect the environment that we live in. We uh, um, develop everything from uh, the basic uh, housing uh, of people, uh, buildings that uh, we live in, institutions that we occupy, roads, uh, sewer networks and bridges and uh, petrochemical plants and you name it, we design it, we build it. So as civil engineers, we have a very wide spectrum of applications. Uh, if, if, um, if I was a, um, you know, advising uh, my, my child about uh, why they should go into uh, civil and environmental engineering, mining and petroleum, probably the first thing that comes to mind as a professional is flexibility. When you get into a degree, you don't know by the time you finish that degree what exactly it's all about and what you're exactly going to be practicing and doing. Uh, civil and environmental engineering offers an incredible amount of flexibility. You can go in and you can practice anything in consulting or in actual implementation and, and construction of these facilities. We've got in here about 10 different disciplines that you could go in, from being involved in construction management uh, to structural design and, and, and engineering work to geotechnical, transportation, environmental, water resources, um, you know, mining, petroleum, uh, you could go into, you know, biomedical related work, you could go into all kinds of, you know, fancy, interesting uh, pieces of work. When we get into civil engineering, it's also exciting because we do a lot of um, good amount of understanding and learning codes and, and, and uh, processes for figuring out designs and planning work and all that, but we interact with people. And in, in, in this discipline, uh, you have the ability to go in and decide for yourself what you want to be. If you want to be out with a client talking about their vision, their aspirations, how they want this bridge built and, and how it should look like and, and estimating it and pricing it and costing it and, and developing it and scheduling it, you could do that. If you want to be on the field overseeing how they are building and what they are building and ensuring all that, you can and that applies to all these 10 disciplines that I mentioned. So it offers you incredible amount of flexibility. Civil engineers end up learning enough basics that they have flexibility, but at the same time, they have good command of the discipline that they can go and practice in an area of their choice if that choice was available. What is also interesting is that, you know, being so diverse, we're not only dependent on one particular um, area of the economy. So in civil engineering, you could be practicing in the infrastructure uh, or in the oil sands or in um, petrochemical works. You could be practicing in any of those disciplines, building pipelines, designing them and, and all that. You could do materials work. Um, the work changes with the economy, but civil engineers practice all kinds of uh, applications. So things are not going very well in the um, uh, oil industry, 
you could be working in the infrastructure because governments are normally spending more money in their infrastructure to crop up the economy. As soon as the um, private industry picks up, governments start slowing down because they probably start paying a premium for uh, building things. And as a result of that, you know, there is work over there. So it averages things out and it gives one the opportunity to practice um, even regardless of the state of the economy. So as a parent, I would like that for my child. I like uh, security and stability. But also it doesn't um, make life uh, monotonous or, or uninteresting. In civil engineering, you could practice being in the office and jump and become on the field. You, you have to have a passion um, for the discipline that you practice in. If, if you are passionate about you know, the quality of life and the infrastructure that we live in and you want to make a difference, uh, civil engineering is definitely uh, for you and you should uh, pursue that. Um, I mentioned all the, um, you know, good things that come with job type of security and flexibility and all that that comes with civil engineering. Um, but you have to have a passion for that in order to uh, succeed and, and uh, get a return on your investment of uh, four years in the university. If you decided to come and work uh, with us in the Department of Civil Environmental Engineering School of Mining and Petroleum, my advice is soak up all the knowledge and know-how from the faculty members that are over here. A lot of them are world-renowned in their disciplines. A lot of them are um, going away uh, to far away places to give talks so people can learn from them. Uh, they are over here, they're teaching you. Uh, take a positive um, approach to learning. It's not all about just getting the degree, it's absorbing the knowledge and know-how. When you get out of here, you will appreciate that quite a bit more than simply going through the motions and, and getting the marks and getting the piece of paper and expecting that you're going to go out and learn later on in life. Um, I've definitely done it the right way. I've soaked up everything I could from the profs that I encountered over life and I still remember them today and that would be 30 years after the fact. And I would encourage you to do the same thing because that would differentiate you from everybody else. That will make you the uh, person that everybody wants to be around because the knowledge is something that you acquire and it starts right here at the university.